Acting Deputy President, I present the report of the Community Affairs References Committee on Palliative Care in Australia, together with the Hansard Record of Proceedings and documents presented to the committee, and move that the report be printed. The question is that the motion be um, agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. Against say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the report? Senator Seward. I move that the Senate take note of the report. It is with pleasure um, that I um, am able to table the Community Affairs Reference Committee report into palliative care um, in Australia. A great deal of work from a great deal of people has gone into uh, enabling us to be able to table this report today. And I particularly wish to thank um, all those who gave evidence to the committee and presented submissions. We have 138 um, submissions and many, many people um, uh, gave evidence during hearings. And I also, before, because I always leave them to the last, I think I'll start at the beginning this time and thank the Secretariat in particular for the uh, hard work that has gone into this committee and, of course, the senators of the Community Affairs Committee. It is always, I've got to say, a pleasure to work with the senators um, on the Community Affairs um, Committee because we work on so many um, issues that we all um, care about. Palliative care, and I'd like to just, and in particular, I should say, I'd like to thank Palliative Care Australia, who also put so much effort into um, this committee report. And I'd like to um, start by um, quoting um, Palliative Care Australia. Palliative Care Australia explained to the committee that palliative care is really about life and that, and that it needs to be an integral part of our health system. In whatever way we perceive palliative care to be, the bottom line is that it is about life, about the proper care of someone who is alive, someone who still has days, months or years remaining to their life. It is about maintaining and improving on a quality of life that you and I would deem reasonable for ourselves and others that ensures comfort, dignity and freedom from preventable pain. This is not an impossible ask. In fact, it is an imperative that we, as a civilised nation, ensure our end days are filled with good experiences and memories of meaningful and worthwhile relationships. Palliative care is an issue that everyone needs to think about, but as Palliative Care Australia um, um, has said to us in the committee, Despite government commitment and the dedication of health professionals, carers and volunteers, many Australians continue to miss out on receiving appropriate end-of-life care. It's become clear during the Senate inquiry that not all Australians who do require palliative care are receiving um, that appropriate care, and we outline some of those examples. The committee did hear of many examples of excellent um, palliative care, but unfortunately we also heard some pretty harrowing cases um, of uh, failures uh, to provide a, um, appropriate palliative care and, in fact, in situations where services weren't able to support somebody and they had passed away before they could get to them on their list. We received submissions from 138 organisations, carers and individuals who shared their accounts and their personal experiences. And in many cases, those personal experiences in particular were very um, intense and, in some cases, I've got to say, harrowing. But they taught us some valuable information. Palliative care has tended to focus presently and in the past on the aged and malignant il illnesses such as cancer. We, need, we learned that we need to broaden that focus to include palliative care for uh, ensure there's proper services for younger people and for non-malignant diseases. We clearly heard that people want to die in place. They want to, to pass away in their place of choice, be that at home, where many people do choose to be, or in an aged care residency, which for people is at home. And in some um, cases, people's choices, in many cases, people's choices aren't being met. Care depends very strongly on the care provided by both professional paid care and a vast number of unpaid carers, and we need to care for those people too. We need, as a community, to be discussing dying and palliative care, because if we don't have these discussions, we are not going to be able to provide and get the service support for, the care, for uh, palliative care that is needed. Part of that discussion that Australians need to have is a need to talk about advanced care planning and directives. There needs to be um, that that discussion needs to be held so that when people are in a situation where they are in a, we're making choices about 
their palliative care, that their choice that they that they can have that discussion, but also when they're no longer in the position to be able to discuss it, their choices have been made clear. The committee has made 38 recommendations. In other words, we've said there needs to be a number of things that need to be done to support palliative care better in this country. Some of those do include a recommendation for a national model framework for advanced care planning and directives, because they are different. Um, we need to be looking at. We've recommended that we need to be looking at national standards and potentially link, linking them to um, accreditation. We've also talked about in our, num new, in our number of recommendations um, the, need, the need to look at palliative care funding. And at the moment, palliative care funding is delivered vi via the subacute funding category. And we think that needs to be looked at, and that it probably needs to be their own. That needs to be a separate category for palliative care funding. And we also need to look at activity-based funding, and we need to ensure that it deals with the complexities of palliative care. What we've heard is that in some cases we're finding that palliative care um, is getting left off or getting reduced in funding and not getting getting the adequate support and funding that it needs. One of the things that we heard very clearly is that there needs to be people need access to information. We heard so many accounts of where people didn't know where to go in a crisis situation to be able to find out about how they get support, both for their loved one, either for themselves, for their loved one, and um, that, that needs to be um, really clear. There needs to be more accessible information. Website, um, websites need to be clear about where you can get information. There needs to be education and training of uh, healthcare professionals across the board, um, carers, and also education of, of the community. But in particular, we also make a recommendation around the need for case management. Um, because what people explain to us is that when they're trying to make decisions in quite desperate and uh, crisis situations, they don't know where to go to, they don't know how to arrange the care, and in fact they're not in the position to be able to make some of um, those decisions um, really in, without that information. So case management would help. So we also recommend uh, the need for case management. As I said, we need to look at training. We've talked about equipment. We've talked about funding for community care and looking at hack. Uh, home and community care, and looking at the possibility of, of uh, being able to fund a palliative care out of that. We also talk about the specific needs for specific uh, uh, communities and cultural appropriate delivery of services to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and what it means for um, ab what palliative care means for them. We talk about the need for cold um, communities, for the needs of the LGBTI communities, and for children. There's a, we really do need a national conversation around palliative care. We've made 38 recommendations. I commend this report to the Senate. I thank everybody for their involvement, and once again, um, I thank the Secretariat um, for their support. As always, they have produced, I think, outstanding work under, again, pressurised uh, situation. I commend the report to the Senate. Thank you, Senator C.